The Faith and Fishing Podcast is sponsored by 413 Lure Company. 413 Lure Company is a family-owned and operated business that puts Christ first and does things the right way. Using really high-quality components, they make some really, really awesome spinner baits, buzz baits, bladed swim jigs, and more in some really sweet color combinations. Check them out on Facebook to see what they can do and place your order today. Welcome to the Faith and Fishing Podcast, where you get to hear all kinds of fishermen tell their stories and share their faith. I'm your host, Cam Steele. Hello and welcome back to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Steele, and we've got a fun episode for y'all this week. But before I jump into the interview, I did want to thank all of you who have rated and reviewed the podcast on iTunes. Those ratings really help the show. One of my favorite things about the podcast is the relationships and friendships I've been able to build with so many different anglers, and this week's episode is definitely one of those guys that I have come to call friend. You will probably recognize his voice because you have heard it before on our discussion about racism. He can be found taking kids on guided fishing and hunting trips, or maybe even fishing in his living room in Lake Ellerby. He's Lonnie Ellerby of DreamWorks Outdoors. Lonnie, man, welcome to the show. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm glad to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely, man. So to get us started off, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners. Tell us a little bit about you and about DreamWorks Outdoors. Gotcha. Um, my name is Lonnie Ellerby. Um, I've been raised in, I uh, was born in New Jersey, but I live here in North Carolina, uh, Laurel Hill, North Carolina, a little place. Um, and, uh, DreamWorks Outdoors, pretty much. When people ask me what it means, it's pretty simple. I want my job to be what I love to do. DreamWorks. You know, it's like, it ain't no work better than DreamWorks. Like, it, and ever since I was a kid, um, I was, I caught my first fish at four years old as a trout. And ever since then, you know, I've been pretty hooked on it. I never lost the interest and I always liked, you know, taking kids and stuff like that. Um, hunting and fishing and letting them be excited as I was. So I want to do that permanently. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to have, I, that's why I try to do, uh, fishing trips, uh, um, guided hunts, you know, and, uh, I do all this out of my pocket, you know, just to, I don't even charge anything. I just like the smile. That's why I, I don't, on my page or whatever, I got a lot of, um, you know, I got a lot of happy stuff on there. So, you know, I, but pretty much that's, that's Dream Works Outdoors in a nutshell for the title, but it's just, it's a lot more than that, but you could buy get the idea i'm just i my dad was a brim fisherman you know he he never went outside of outside of uh you know sportsman like stuff or whatever he just liked brim but i wanted to always take it to the next level so here i am (laughs) (laughs) i hear you man all right so you kind of touched on it a little bit already uh but uh tell us the story how it how it was that you got into fishing well um, I was in, I think, yeah, I think we were in New Jersey. No, we might have been in Italy. I was, it was, a, I was an army brat or whatever. My mom and daddy retired military. I'm, I can't remember if it was Italy or it was in New Jersey, but, um, I caught a trout and I, I got it on home video and, uh, it was a pretty big trout. It was a rainbow trout and my daddy, he was like, reel him in. And I was too weak to reel it in. Like, cause he was pulling so hard, I couldn't turn the reel, and they were standing on top of the hill. So I looked back at them, I looked back at the fish, and I looked back at them, and then I just took and wrapped my legs all around in the fishing line and ran up to my mom and my daddy <laughs> up on the hill, and the fish comes flopping out the water, and I run down there with all the line on my legs or whatever, and I pick up the fish or whatever, and, and I got all that on home video, but ever since then, I just, I can't shake it. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm addicted now. I hear you. Me too. All oh, right, yeah. man. Um, so uh, you mentioned your page already. You're you're pretty active on social media, um, and I, I mm-hmm. definitely can't let you go uh, without without uh, bringing up Lake Ellerby, man. So uh, if if anyone hasn't seen it already, uh, tell our listeners a little bit about about Lake Ellerby. All right, but yeah. Um, 
what do you mean, my um my DreamWorks page or my actual page? Um I'm not sure which one it's on actually. <laughs> Um, is okay, it on yeah, both? Well, yeah, well, no, we'll see. Okay, but I, I'm just naturally country by doing whatever on my personal page, whatever. But pretty much DreamWorks Outdoors, if that's what you mean, like my actual separate page for just my hunting and fishing and my organization or whatever. But it's called uh, DreamWorks Outdoors with a Z. You know, DreamWorks with a Z. And out, I mean, DreamWorks with an S and Outdoors with a Z. And, um, I'll be the only one that pops up, you know, and everything. And if, you know, you like hunting or fishing, camping, et cetera, you know, check it out. I got, I try to do some exciting stuff. I try to keep it fresh, um, exciting, happy, get the kids out, um, just show people what it's like, you know, what my life is like, you know, getting some, some good footage. I got my GoPro, um, I'll be putting, letting kids wear the GoPro. I put two, two of my, actual two of my best friends, um, baby girls, they were six and eight. And I put them on two, uh, one 29 pounds and the other one caught one 32 pounds. And they caught it all by themselves and that was their first fish. So, you know, like, I like stuff like that. But if you check my page out, it's a lot of that hunting, fishing, all the way to the sea. For sure, and uh, whenever they check your page, they're they're bound to uh, to come across uh, you fishing in what you call Lake Ellerby. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that's something I've been uh, I've, I've been watching to make sure I, I catch all the episodes of. So why don't you uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> all right, yeah. So I don't really understand how it happened. I got a fish tank and. Um, it was a pretty nice size, and I was like, all right. And I went fishing, and I caught a really big brim. And I was like, oh, I want to keep it alive. So I got that one, and then, then eventually I start catching all the species that I like, like fly br- flyer brims. I don't know if yeah, they have them everywhere, but we call them fly brims, uh, some, regular, uh, some regular bluegill, got a couple bass in there, some goggle eyes, a little warm out. And I got a little assortment in there. And they all act completely different. And believe it or not, I learned from these fish. Like, the last time I went fishing was the last good day I went fishing. I caught a 100. And I caught a 100 fly brim. And I'm going to tell you how I, if you ever see me fish on and go live on my Lake Ellerby visit, I mean, uh, Lake Ellerby fishing trips or whatever, all right, if the fish are all at the bottom, it could be 100 degrees outside. It doesn't matter. If the fish are at the bottom, they will not bite. I could throw a worm in there. I could throw a, a cricket. They would just won't bite. But it'd be a pretty day outside. But if I walk through my living room and I look and they're like all scattered, like they're just in there, like just swimming around, I can almost drop a pencil eraser in there and they'll eat it. And every time it's like that, I go fishing and I've caught fish. <laughs> so, I, so I like learning and, and whenever, and especially with all the corona stuff that had happened and they shipped me in the house for a while, I was going, I was having a time in my life. <laughs> but Absolutely. I couldn't man. catch him too much. All right. So, all right, man. Well, let's get into it. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, why don't you tell us what you believe in? Well, you know, I believe in God, and I've been saved, and, you know, I wish I was a little bit more closer uh, than I am now, but, you know, it's a process. I've, I've come a long way, you know, and um, I've been through some stuff where I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, like, I ain't no pretty sure, but, you know, I know that's what, I might not be the, the star pupil, but. I know what I believe in, and in 2012, uh, August 25th, I got in a car accident, and I was in the woods for a day and a half, and I had to break my own femur to get out the car and, you know, crawl to the road, and I'm in the newspaper, I was in the newspaper and all that, but it, the, I, something was talking to me, or somebody was talking to me, talked me through that whole experience, and I remember it, and 
I know it wasn't me talking, and that wasn't my voice. So ever since then, I try, but, you know, life and everything, you know, but I, I, I'm trying, you know? Absolutely, man. Well, um, if you would, uh, kind of tell us the, the story of how it was that you, uh, that, like you said, you got saved. Um, so kind of tell us, uh, tell us what that was like. Well, um, actually, uh, it was at my, I got a new job. I had lost my job at a job I was at for five years. And, um, it was, I, I got a job pretty quick after that, you know, but it wasn't home or anything. And, uh, my first week or two there, one of the guys that worked with me, he was just cool. You know, we started chit chatting or whatever. And he was like, Hey man, they're having a revival up here at, uh, at, at a church near my house. Want to go? And I was like, yeah, why not? I need, you know, so. I'll go and it was, it was really sad because I mean, I, I was fresh off of work and I work an hour away. So when he asked me, he got, he was close to home. So he got the change and I did. So I was like looking all homeless and stuff after work. But, and I went to church. He was like, don't matter, man. Come on. So I go and, um, and I'm sitting in the back. I sit in the very back, you know, cause I'm all dirty and stuff like that. And, and, I felt like the preacher kept, like, looking at me or whatever, and I felt like he was talking to me, but he wasn't. And, like, it, I mean, and at at one point, he was like, anybody want to come down or whatever and, uh, you know, give your heart to the Lord? And I, was, and I sat there for a second, and he sat there for about five minutes quiet, and I was just like, all right, I, I think that's me. So I go up, and it was, uh, you know, you can't fake you can't fake a feeling, and you know, I, I'm. This was seven months ago, actually, and I can't say my life changed, and for the better. I, I, you know, some things got weaned out of my life where I, I, you know, I have no interest in. So, I mean, I mean, I like it ever since. You know, I like it. I like it. You know, I I could be better, but I like it. You know. Absolutely, and so. um did you say that your your life has changed or has not changed since that? It has. It has. It definitely has. You know, I, I my mindset is definitely not the same. I mean, I still, I still, like I said, I still could make some better choices or whatever. But for the most part, I feel better. Like ever since I don't hold, I don't have so much anger. I mean, not it's an anger or animosity towards anything. Like. I don't know how they explain it. I mean, I would recommend it to anybody. I mean, I'm not saying that it's like a fashion or anything, but I mean, I would recommend it if, you know, if you feel it in your heart, do it. Cause, uh, I mean, it's worth it, you know? Absolutely. And so as a, uh, as a relatively new believer, um, you said seven months ago, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. So, uh, what would you say that uh, where you are right now, uh, what would you say that faith means to you? Well, faith means to me everything because, you know, I, I was so, I was so, so lost, you know, um, I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. I was just waking up every day like, I ain't have no, I, I had no drive. I mean, I always had ideas, but just no drive. So, um, you know, ever since, you know, I, I mean, I've had it before, but I just needed a good drive, like, to, to restart, to push start. So, ever since, I've been pushing DreamWorks outdoors. I've been on it. I've been trying to make calls, connections, whatever. Like, it's like stuff is just falling into place. Like, it's right here. Like, it's just, you know, little stuff here, here and there. It's like, it's meant for me. All I had to do was just accept it. Awesome. All right. So, um, at this point in your life, would you say that there are any specific times out on the water you can think of that have affected your faith in any way? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, dang, they're so easy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, um, one instance, uh, I took my buddy to catfish, 
I have actually I got a video on my page. Um, he never caught a big catfish, and I took him and put him on a guided trip, and we caught like twenty that day, and they were all over like thirty pounds. Like it was a very good day, and I was happy, I was excited. And now keep in mind, this guy is about six, seven, six, eight. About 220 pounds, I mean 240 pounds, a little more in there, you know, tall guy. So, he's country, just like me, I mean, he's, you know, he, he fishes, he hunts, so he's out of my himself. And we're leaving the river after a good day, we had the best day ever. And we're, he's kind of sketchy through this bit of rock, this river, but if you're, you know, in savvy with a boat, or, you know, you should know how to get through there. A long story short, he gets caught up looking at the geese flying, talking about it's pretty. The boat catches a swirl and turns the boat sideways, and the boat gets that uh, hits, um, hits the two rocks and starts to capsize. So all the catfish gets away, all of my brand new rods, my my gun, all of that falls down into the water. So I, I can't lose my boat, and I. Assumed he could swim. So I jump in this rushing current of river, holding my boat, and I'm like, oh, I can't even swim. I mean, I can swim, but this rushing water, I, what am I doing? So I was like, I need this boat, so I, I get a hold of it so I can get the water out. And I, but somehow I, I gripped my feet, and like, I heard something tell me it's going to be all right, and I gripped my feet somehow, and all that. Rushing current, and the boat I had it in my hand, but it was full of water. And I looked back at my buddy, I was like, Come on, man, jump. And he was like, I can't swim. I was like, Me neither. You know, so, <laughs> so now I'm saying, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He's bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing, dude? I know you're really not out here on the little, and he's on a rock about the size of a paint can, leaf. like, and he's like standing there, and the water's like splashing up on his boots, making him slip. And he's like, Please don't leave me. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? You know, like I'm gonna, I can't. Oh my god! So I, I can't let my friend die. So I try my best. So somehow I don't know how I got that boat up. Like I, I, all that water rushing against it, I kind of used it. I pushed up on the very bank and let the actual current on my bank help push the front of the boat up and turn it to the side a little bit. To dump maybe half the water out and I turned it back real fast. And it was buoyant. There was enough for it to be buoyant. And I pushed it to him. And I was like, get on the boat now. And so he jumps and dives in the boat. And so it's like, I was like, now scoop that water. So he's scooping that water. And I jump in and belly crawl in the boat. And we make it we make it back safe well, to the bank. But we lost everything and all my poles and all everything I had. And this was last year. You know, and so, uh, I mean... Ever since then, I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. That's what made me for sure believe and have faith because, like, I can't swim. And I had to save my buddy, and I was, it was on, it was on contact. And I know I couldn't have did that by myself because, yeah, like, definitely. I mean, that was a really <laughs> sketchy experience for me. It's giving me chills thinking about it. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So, uh, that being said, was there, uh, uh, was there anything that you wanted to kind of uh, throw out there for our listeners in terms of safety that you may have learned from that experience? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I can for sure tell you, if you always got to wear have your life jacket. Like, always have your life jacket. <laughs> like, Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, always, I, I've, I can't lie, I've, I've done it, I've fished all kind of places, and, you know, I should have my life jackets, and that right there is a reason. It doesn't matter. You can have two seasoned people that have fished all of their life, and that could still happen. You could almost die. So, yes, life jackets all day, and I always have mine on for sure. <laughs> for sure. So this next question um, is one that's uh, that's become kind of my favorite of the whole podcast. So, um, what fishing story or memory means the most to you? Um, the best fishing memory I have, um, oh, I know, my biggest bass I ever caught. Um, so I was with my buddy, uh, Gerard Amos, 
and uh, uh, he was a little younger than me. He could not never fish that good, but we fished together so much. We learned each other and everything. So I told him I, uh, we had a uh, live brim. We had a live brim, and I put him on my hook and everything. And it was 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, and it was like where the sun was real, real bright in the water. It was like trickling off the water. And uh, my buddy, he was uh, driving the boat, so like wherever he goes, I go. So I was like, man, it's the middle of the day. A big female should be out here in this middle trying to patrol catchers like on big bait, uh, like big bait. And he was like, no, 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 we need to go to this cove. So I take my bait cast and I chunk them out. And so I chunk them out and I could tell it just was like an immediate stop. And I was like, I was like, stop the trolling motor, stop the trolling motor. I think I got something. So I set the hook. I set the hook. And when I take, I have my stuff up the par. So like if it, if I can't, if it doesn't give any when I set the hook and I set the hook hard, it's a big one. So as soon as I set the hook, it didn't move, but I could feel it. And I was like, big one. So all right. So he was like, all right, all right, all right. So he's um, getting ready, getting situated and everything. So finally get the fish up after about, remember, it's like a good eight minutes of fighting, like a good solid eight. And um, comes up, finally coming up to the boat. I was like, boy, he's coming up to the boat. Now when she comes up, well, when it comes up, grab it. So I pull it up. And when I tell you this was the biggest bass I had, I mean, it was huge. And... So he was like, no, he hesitated. He was like, no, I'm not putting my hand in his mouth. I was like, if you don't grab that bass right now. And he was like, no. And I was like, grab the bass. <laughs> and so he was like, he grabbed the line about six, no, it was about 15 inches up and tries to grab that so he can grab the mouth. I said, no. By the time I said no, the line snapped. All right. Oh, man. So we, we look at each other for about five minutes. Like, we're like, Dumb, dumbfounded. Like we don't, we didn't even speak or nothing. And then all of a sudden, I was like, "Well, we just got out here. We done caught two six pounders already." And that was like the next one. And I was like, "Let's keep fishing. We ain't even hit the whole pond yet. No reason to be sad." I was like, "Pull the fish up. They're making the the boat uh, swim funny because we had about fifteen, twenty brim on a stringer." So he goes to pull up the stringer, and guess what? It was wrapped up in the line with the brim. Oh, the man. bass that I just lost is tangled and doesn't is not flapping. I mean, it's barely on there, I, and he is not. I mean, it's just laying there in the pretty water, like just the fan tail, just like oh man, with the sun shining on it, it was so beautiful. I was like Gerard, I never forget it. This is we, every time I film, we laugh. I, I was like Gerard, don't move, get the net. Like, how you not gonna move? He was like, <laughs> he was like, he was like, how you gonna tell me not to move and get in it? I was like, you take it too long. And before I knew it, I had to, uh, like, shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand. It was as wide as my shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. I grabbed him on the side of the boat and scooped him all the way on the boat and into my chest. And he wrapped around my chest and I dropped him in the boat. And that was 14 pounds. And if you look on my page, that's one of my, uh, one of my profile pictures. And, you know, uh, that was one of my best catches right there. And, uh, awesome memory. And I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. You said 14 pounds? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I live in North Carolina. And if you know what I know, you know what I'm saying? That don't happen. But I mean, it, it, Believe it or not, in that pond that I used to have, the uh, hurricane messed it up and it dried all the way up. I had, I know I had one of probably at least a pound bigger than that before. So, yeah. but that was my biggest. I probably never catch one like that again. That was about four years, four years ago. I caught a bunch of eight, bunch of seven, bunch, uh, maybe about three nine. But that one right there, oh yes, yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> man that's that's a big one um oh, yeah. all right man so you um you get the opportunity to take a lot of different people fishing uh whenever you're out fishing with people uh what are you what are you typically talking about what's your conversation centered around well um you know generally i if i'm if i'm going with the kid you know like i try not to have them to take kids too young you know i like to let them have um I can't even explain it. You have to learn them because 
uh, you can have a kid that's six years old that's like, I mean, he's got it. And you can have a 13 year old that needs a lot of help. So you got to kind of, you know, hey, what do you, where you want to fish? Like, uh, where do you think would be a good spot to cast? Or, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you should try this. What do you like to use? And interact to where they get to talk to me or, and like, I get to learn them, laugh, cut up what they like, and then I can teach them what I like. And usually it works, you know, and uh, now if I'm fishing or hunting, I mean, fishing with an adult or anything, I mean, we I just like to keep it, keep it funny, man. Like, I just tell jokes the whole time. Oh, you bet not cast in the tree. You pine perch fish. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm all, uh, yeah, that's a, that's about a conversation, you know. I mean, I'm just laughing and cutting up, trying to make the day fun. I feel like the hook gets better when you're having fun. Awesome. So, um, what life advice do you wish you had been able to start off with? Just, I I reckon I would say, just never lose, just never lose your your dream. Like, just if you want something, don't forget it. A lot of people, a lot of people. Oh, have a have something they want to do, and it just might be hard for them at a time, and they'll just forget about it. Just no, just keep that, keep the drive. If you want it, try it, go get it. it I mean, it, it sometimes it takes a little longer than others, but just never lose hope for stuff like that. For sure, that's awesome. And uh, to flip it around, what fishing advice do you wish you had been able to start off with? unorthodox i like to fish like other people don't like i if you got a pond if you got a pond that like a lot of people fish and you know there's big bass in it use something different nine out of ten you'll get a curiosity bite like um i mean like think outside the norm like a lot of people want to fish banks you know um coves and stuff fish open water learn how to fish open water you know, fish jigs like I mean, just instead instead of fishing the the outside the, the um the coves or everything, just go to the center of the pond and fish that all day long and see what happens. I guarantee you, when you do hook up, you you gonna know why. Like it's gonna be big fish. Like, and I like stuff like that. I like unorthodox fishing. You know, I've caught big bass off a of hill. You know, um. I like stuff like that. I, if you look at my page, I got a lot of big bass, and all of them pretty much came off of odd stuff. So, you know, that's my tip: just fish strange, never be scared to try something new. You know, you never know what might bite. Absolutely. So, is there a um, is is, is how strange is too strange? I mean, are we talking light drop shot in a spinner bait or what? Man, look, I, I've tried. <laughs> I've tried, man, I've tried, uh, have you ever heard of the donkey rig? I have. Okay, all right. You can do that with flukes or trick worms, right? So, I mean, I I fish the donkey rig a lot. Like, I like it. Like, um, it's just, I don't I it's just, it's, it works good in shallow water with, like, uh, that or, um, actually, what else? What was it that time I knew? Oh, leeches. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can get le- I mean, I don't know if you have access to leeches where you're at, but, I mean, you can kind of, like, take a rake and rake up the old mud around on the dirt roads and stuff, and you can find them. They look like little balls, and then when they stretch out, they'll be a leech. You can take that and put that in the trailer, and if there's a bass in there, if, if it's on bed or or anything like that, I don't know what's on the leech, but you can almost guarantee it, you know, but you don't get a lot of them, but stuff like that, like, and it's so little, like, the leeches be so little, about maybe like an inch and a half long, but a big bass will smash it, like, <laughs> stuff like that, like, I fish, uh, I, man, I'll just, like I said, unorthodox, like, just try anything, if you got an idea, just try it. I tried the, the 12-inch jelly worms one time, and I wasn't getting any bites off of it. So I said, I'm going to fish it wacky style and put a bullet weight on it. And I was like, 
that's ugly. You know, like, I was like, I know that's ugly. You know what I'm saying? Like, what am I doing? Like, but I threw it out there. I probably finished it with 10 minutes, and I hooked a monster. He got off, but I did. I hooked him. I got him all the way to the boat, and I know it was 10. But it was huge out there in the beaver pond by my house. But, like, like I said, this fish, fish unorthodox, unorthodox, like, I, I fished that whole pond with that same jelly worm and never got a bite. I switched it up, fishing it ugly, like, wacky style with a, like, it was literally hooked through the middle, like, ugly with a bullet weight. And that's exactly how I fished it, and that's how I hooked it. So, yeah, so pretty much, just be strange. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's awesome. So, uh, you, um, you, you fish for a lot of different species. Is there a particular species that sits at the top of your bucket list that you haven't caught yet and you want to make sure you do? Well, um, I think right now, right now I'm a bass guy. Like I, I like bass fishing, but my dream is to either catch um, a Goliath grouper or a peacock bass. I really want to go to the Amazon and catch those giant peacock bass. That I have to do it. I have to. <laughs> That's the, oh man, I'm getting excited thinking about it. I got to do it. <laughs> Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, and is there a particular fishing spot that sits at the top of your bucket list? <clears throat> well, I guess, you know, more the best fishing spot, you know, like for fun wise, it's only a certain time of year, but, um, Benson County, Blue Falls Dam, you know, uh, that place, yeah, I'm, that's some fun fishing. It's got a little bit of everything in it, but you just got to know how to fish. A lot of people don't know how to fish it, so fish is always good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're going to jump into a segment here. We call it What's Your Favorite? It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to ask you your favorite in a few different uh, few different categories here. So, um, do you have uh, Do you have a favorite scripture? Oh, actually... I think it might be in my wallet. Um, it is. Oh, okay. But I think I, I, I don't want to lie and say exactly if it's the wrong scripture, but it was like Matthew. My mom, my mom's a minister. So, uh, it was Matthew 11, Matthew chapter. It was like Matthew chapter 11 or. Oh, verse 13 or something like that but, but when I asked her about it and she explained it she was like that God gives um, people different gifts he might give this guy two gifts he might give the guy down the street 30 gifts and, you know like uh, it, it's just it doesn't mean that nobody's better than another it's just that's what he put in like put in you because you can tell them you know or so I was like, all right, and I was going through a time where um, I just didn't know what I wanted to do with life. You know, like I had, I was good at everything. I could will, I could, I could feel, I could fish, I could hunt, I could, you know, I could do it all. And I was going crazy. And she was like, you need to read it. And I read it, and I didn't really quite understand it. And she was like, you read it. And then I read it. And, uh, and she explained to me, you know, like, just don't stress so much. It's okay that God gives, uh, you know, he gives a, a bigger plate to people that he knows can handle. So, I and I was like, all right, well, I'll take that. And ever since then, I think that's kind of, if I can, I thought it was in my wallet, and I'm pretty bummed out that it's not in here right now, but I'll definitely have to find that. But I'm going to have to ask her. But it was chapter. It wasn't Matthew. It definitely wasn't Matthew. For sure, absolutely. And uh, so, uh, do you have a favorite Bible story that stands out to you? My favorite Bible story. I would say. I think Moses, like when he split the sea, like I think that was. I think that was probably like, like you got to have a lot of faith for that, you know. Like, 
Yeah, for sure. I wish I could really see it, you know, in real life, like, you know, like, actually, that's got to be, yeah, that's, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, so what's your favorite fish to catch? My, uh, my favorite fish to catch is, I think catfish. I mean, it's not like setting a hook on the solid 40. 45, you know, just a just a dead weight. I like it, you know. Absolutely. So, uh, what about your favorite fish to fish for? Mm-hmm. I can't even answer that, like, truthfully, because I like all fish, but uh, it's really, I like whatever fish is biting at the time. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> If it's crappy season, I'm catching crappy. If it's bad, you know, like, so I don't discriminate. I love them all. (laughs) Absolutely. And I'm going to discriminate here for just a second, and I'm going to thank you for saying crappy correctly. (laughs) Shoot. Absolutely. It's it's, it's not crappy. crappy. It's not crappy. It's crappy. Yeah, it's crappy. (laughs) Yes. 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 All right, man. So, uh, what about your favorite fish to eat? Um, actually, crappy is probably my favorite. And I'm gonna honest, be honest with you. Um, there's a Mexican guy that works that work with me. His name is George. He's he's cool, man. And he he like eats a lot of traditional Mexican food. And uh, he's actually getting into fishing, and he's pretty good. So he was like, "Line, oh no, what do you call it? Ceviche." Yeah, it was called ceviche, and um, it's like you cook, you take a crappy meat, and you fillet it off the bone or whatever, and it's just meat, and you take little scissors, and you chop it, chop it up in like little chunks or whatever, and you want about 12 of them, and you chop it up in little chunks, and you put a whole bag of lemons, you go to Walmart, buy a whole bag of lemons, and, you know, squeeze all the lemon juice on top of the meat. And put it in the refrigerator for like eight hours, you know, overnight. When you wake up in the morning, the juice that's laying on top, you pour that off. And then you just take ketchup and put it in there to like to your desired like texture or whatever. And it's the stuff called the beach. And the lemon juice actually the acid in it actually cooks the fish because crappy has a flaky you to actually uh, cook it. It'll look like you cooked it in a, a deep fryer or something. Like, I don't know how it happens, but and he, and he gave it to me. I was like, I don't want to try it. And he was like, man, try it. So I tried it, and it is awesome. It is called some H-E, and he, he taught me that it was best to do it with crappy because the way to meet it. Okay, I mean, it's absolutely. It's pretty, pretty simple. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm a big fan of a crappy sandwich myself. Yeah. All right, man. Well, while we're on the subject of food, what's your favorite fish and snack? Beef jerky. Yeah, man. I got to have a drink. I hear you. Any particular brand or <laughs> flavor? Oh, yeah. Got to have Jack Lee teriyaki. I hear you. Yeah, everything else tastes like poison. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'm not going to ask for any GPS coordinates or any special secret spots or anything like that, but what's your favorite body of water to fish on? Um, and, like, you know, that's another hard one. Like, honestly, I can't answer because where where the fish are, I go. You know, so, like, a pond tends to be my favorite pond. If they ain't fish there in a week or two, I hate that pond. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so... <laughs> I, I keep it moving. I keep it moving. I I learned to like everywhere, you know. All right. And last but not least, what's your favorite time of year to fish? Oh, man, when the dog was blown. I, well, I learned that from my dad. My dad would always tell me, boy, when the dog would start blooming, the fish is like, and we got a dog wood right across the street from our house. And so it's like right on in front of the mailbox. So whenever we check the mail, if the dog will start coming, I play, hey, Dave, let's go fish. And that's how I usually start my year. That's awesome. 
Um, oh, yeah. All right, man. So we're going to start wrapping things up. Uh, so if you would, let us know what's uh, what's coming up for you and uh, for DreamWorks Outdoors. All right. Well, um, yeah, uh, for anybody that's interested or whatever, um, I, I do giveaways uh, for shirts, and, you know, just to get my name out and everything on. Uh, I got some, I should have a, a fishing trip. Um, you know, a good whole edited fishing trip, ocean fishing. That should be pretty cool. Uh, y'all should check that out. Um, I'm actually trying to start, uh, episodes or whatever, you know, uh, actual episodes out. It means like I finally got somebody that'll help edit some of my information and like my videos and stuff. So they're going to shake things up and that's going to be pretty cool. But I got a lot of stuff happening. Um, if you, if, if anybody ever needs any merchandise or anything, like, I, it does go back, the money that I do make goes back to, uh, merchandise for hunting for the kids or adults, you know, like, um, new wood for the box and, the uh, corn. Um, so I, I actually have, I, I try to go live if anybody ever sends me some kind of, you know, donations or anything. I actually show it on live and put it back into what I said I'm going to put it into. Like, uh, like, Tractors, uh, this farm request, I mean, quick, I mean, um, uh, anything that I might need, you know, fishing poles, uh, like, uh, sometimes I'll have, um, uh, uh, little turkey shoots, mini turkey shoots for kids or whatever, and I, even if they don't do that good, I still give them shirts or whatever, all that, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, I got a lot going on, I got a lot gonna happen here soon, and, um, uh, I'd like for everybody to be a part of it and, uh, you know, help me grow and, you know, or, or not just look at the page and tell me what you like. So. Absolutely. And do you have any sponsors or supporters you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, actually, I have no sponsors. I've been, I've been looking for sponsors. So if anybody's never open, uh, if anybody here's is, uh, I'm a great guy. You know, I might love you after Walmart, you know. <laughs> No, I'm just joking, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have any sponsors or anything like that, and, but I do want to give a shout out to, uh, Alfonso Jackson. He's pretty cool. He, he, he pointed me out to this, and, um, and, uh, you know, my mom and my daddy for, you know, um, not getting upset because I want to fish instead of being a doctor. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, so, uh, but yes, man, you know, everybody that, um, everybody that, you know, supports me and, uh, hopes, I genuinely hope that I do, do good. And I mean, I just want to give a shout out to everybody. You <laughs> know, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm just nice, and, you know. But yeah, that's about it, I guess. Oh, oh and my girlfriend, yeah, and she's the one that, um, has to deal with my upset days when I don't catch anything and stuff. So <laughs> I got to give her a shout out. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, if our listeners want to get in touch with you or follow you on social media, how do they find you? Um. Well, if uh, my personal page is Lonnie Ellerby, uh, L-O-N-N-I-E, Ellerby, E-L-L-E-R-B-E, um, I should have a catfish as my, um, my profile picture. But if you want to find my official DreamWorks Outdoors page, um, you can either go on Facebook, go to your search tab and click, I mean, and type in at the at symbol, DW Outdoors with a Z and it'll pop up with a link or you can look up DreamWorks Outdoors, Dream Works, which is one word, DreamWorks, one word and Outdoors with a Z instead of an S, DreamWorks Outdoors and I'll be the first one to pop up. Nobody else has it. So. You know, check it out. You know, and I, I promise you, you'll find something on there that you like because I keep it. I I try to keep it interesting. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, it has been a blast, um, and uh, I wish you all the best, man. Man, I appreciate it, man. Uh, and I, I like what you're doing. It's pretty cool, and so, but 
I was in, so I like for you to keep in touch, man. I don't want it to be 20 years before I hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Another big thank you to Lonnie for coming on the show and sharing his story and having some fun with us. If you want to find out more about Lonnie or are interested in booking him as a guide in southeastern North Carolina, check him out on social media on DreamWorks Outdoors. And as always, links will be in the show notes. Thanks again for listening. Y'all take care and God bless. Thanks for listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. If you like this episode, please give it a rating, a review, and make sure to subscribe on whatever app you're listening to so you never miss an episode. You can follow the podcast on social media at facebook.com slash faith and fishing podcast and Instagram at faith and fishing pod. Special thanks and a big shout out to our show sponsor, 413 Lure Company, to Jonathan Enthalancy for helping me write, play, and record the music for the show, and to Tyler Worrell, the graphic designer behind our amazing logo. If you have any questions about faith, I encourage you to contact a pastor in your community. Thanks again for tuning in, and until next time, get out there and catch some fish, and I will catch you on the next episode.